Instinct is an amazing thing. The most simple and primal instincts are the most important. Both men and dogs' instincts to hunt have been present for millions of years. When they figured out how to hunt together, success became routine. There are three roads that lead to the same destination. There are three players seeking to achieve one goal. Why do I hunt? It's who I am. Where do I find the passion? It's in my blood. How do I keep going? It's what I live for. We are the wildlifers. I think arguably one of the worst or maybe best things that ever happened to me was growing up hunting with hounds with my dad. You know, had I not done that, I'd probably have a lot more money and a lot less gray hairs, but I wouldn't have had near as much fun. Dan just loves hunting with hounds. I mean, I think what makes it special for him is that they're your dogs and you have that relationship with them and you know their personality and you know their drive and you know their mind and you know how they think. Well, it's just, that's pretty special. It's a pretty special bond that you have between a person and their dog. Dan's dad hunted with hounds for, you know, I don't even know how many years. Dan grew up doing that. He loves it. So Dan's grew up with that, and he's you know, acquired a passion for it that's like no other. I mean, his love for hunting with hounds is like nothing you've ever seen. He loves it. My dad initially got me involved with hound hunting because I don't remember not doing it with him. Um, I've seen pictures of me literally sitting in the front seat of his truck with diapers on from coyotes down in Laredo years and years ago, exactly 47 years ago to be exact. But after that, I started cat hunting with a man named Joe Rufus Lyon from George West, and um, he pretty much became my mentor and the guy that taught me everything about running bobcats and how to make the hounds and also what I expect in my hounds to this day, as far as I'm concerned, is the best cat hunter that ever lived. Everybody has their favorite hunt. I mean, some people love elk hunting, some people love deer hunting. You know, you always ask people what they love, you know, what do you like? I like whitetail hunting. I mean, and, and you like it all, but there's that one hunt that you love the best. And for Dan, that's bobcat hunting. It's, it's his favorite thing to do. You know, when you talk about hunting with hounds, I mean, Dan, he learned from his dad. You learn something new every day, and you learn the things that are, you know, you don't want to do, and you learn when to correct them, when to not correct them. And there's not a better person to learn that from than your own dad, who's been doing the same thing. So Dan, he learned a lot from his father. It doesn't matter what we have planned. We could be going to have dinner with the president, but if it's bobcat hunting weather and the time is right, he's going bobcat hunting. That's what it means to him. He loves it. Wildlifers is brought to you by Mellon Creek Outfitters, raising standards, not fences. Barnes Precision Machine, USA made with unmatched performance. Wise Eye Smart Feeders, feed the guest, zap the pest, shut out the rest. Onyx Hunt, where the pavement ends, Onyx begins. We 
are the wildlifers. If one places the right bloodlines together, training a hound is the least of your worries. All one must do is show that hound what you don't want. Instinct and genetics will handle the rest. Training hounds, running hounds, making hounds, whatever you want to call it, I don't think that that's something where you ever you wake up one day and you go, okay, I finally got it. You know, I know how to do this. That's not true because each dog you train is an individual and his or her peak performance is never really found. It's just a, it's something that you continue to chase and you never catch it, but that's okay because along the way, you have a ton of really great hounds that you're always trying to improve it. You know, I've learned from Dan. I've learned, you know, I've learned that you have to have some patience with the dog. I know sometimes you have to be stern with the dog. Sometimes you have to be easier with them. You have to learn their personalities. And that's what I've learned from Dan is certain dogs you gotta be tougher on, certain dogs you can't be tough. You know, and it's really cool to watch Dan with his dogs because he knows which ones to be tough on, which ones not. And, you know, it's just, I go back to that experience thing. and. And you learn that from working dogs. You can't learn it out of a book. You can't learn it from somebody else. You just gotta get out there and get your hands dirty and work with them. Well, my brother Joe and I grew up hunting these hounds together. And to be completely honest, I can think of about 300 million people I would have rather grown up hunting cats with than him. We didn't really start enjoying hunting cats together until 15 years ago. <laughs> so where do you think we'll be 10 years from now, 20 years from now, hound hunting? Better dog. Uh, I just hope they don't make it illegal. I don't think they will in this state. No. I mean, you can't take away my way of life. No. You really can't. It's not just our way of life. It's a lot of people that, that do it for a lot of the right reasons. Nobody can argue with the fact that the most effective way to control the predators is the dogs. No doubt. It's been that way forever. Yeah. Yeah. Good dog. Yeah. Good dogs. You ever think 20 years ago that we'd be hunting in these things? No. But I use the Polaris. Yeah, I know it. And it's not nearly as good as the Can-Am. It's 10 times what this thing is. Matter mm -hmm. of fact, no. this winter, when it rains again, Mm -hmm. I'll we, be we, getting a call. We can have a race. It isn't about how fast you get there. It's about what you do when you get there. And that going to the hunt and coming back to the house. And I make it every time in my players. This no, thing, no, I've never ever not made it in this. You day. haven't gone anywhere in it. It's still brand new. No, it isn't. I wouldn't oh. own that machine. It works better than yours. It does. No. When we were younger, our methods were different and our egos were a lot bigger. And we both thought we were better than the other one and it certainly showed when we tried to hunt together, but it became a pleasure to go and to, you know, I could learn from him and he could learn from me. But in spite of all of the arguments we may have had when we were in our teens and early 20s, there was a mutual respect there that, you know, we both had some really good cat dogs and um, we both enjoyed it. It isn't a hobby to me anymore. Me it's a way of life. Mm -hmm. And every day when I get up, I fight to be better than I was yesterday. Yeah, and, but this time of year, you know, back in the day, <clears throat> it didn't matter. March winds, June, July, Texas, mm -hmm. August hot. You get up and you go four or five days a week. You didn't care and anymore. I walk out on my porch. This morning I did. Mm -hmm. I walked out on my porch and I was like, boy, it's gotta be 85% humidity. 77 degrees. Mm -hmm. Call O'Hagan. I said, you go ahead. Back up good. I just can't stand it in mm -hmm. this kind of heat, but it's still, you know, like some people say they hear a song or something. They'll say, I don't know why, but that song, every time I hear it, regardless of how many times I hear it, like it does something emotionally here. Right.
Barnes Precision Machine, USA made with unmatched performance. Dogs are by nature pack animals. Once you establish that you are the alpha, dogs will walk through a fire for you. I couldn't do what you do where you, you know, you got the cat dogs, the quality of the cat dogs you have, and then to take on the other thing of training the man dogs for the deal in Africa, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. That just looks like a serious pain because you're doing that in a daytime in Texas. You bet. In June Absolutely. or May. It's hot. Yeah, it's hot. But, you know, when I got asked by Ivan Carter early on, I guess it was not early, it was late 2016, um, to go over and, and do an evaluation on their kennels, and I did so. And, and I realized that there was dogs that would track really good, but they wouldn't bark. And they wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't engage at the end of the track. So when I had the conference call that day, I mean, uh, conference with all the, the people in the, in, the, in the conference room there, I said, look guys, I said, y'all are pushing, trying to push water uphill. I said, these people are gonna run and you're never gonna catch them. And I said, I can't fix what you have. I said, I, I've helped y'all uh, get the dogs more focused, but in order for me to fix it, I gotta go home. Joe was contacted by some friends about the rhino poaching in South Africa, which has become just absolutely rampant. And uh, they came up with this idea to train hounds to track these poachers down and catch them. Joe went to work on it, you know, kind of put the cat dogs for a little while on a back burner to, to make these hounds. He actually took a trip to Africa and was very moved by what he saw there. Well, I, I personally think that it is the most wonderful thing that Joe has taken all this knowledge that he has gained over the years of training these cat dogs and spinning that where he can take these dogs and teach them how to keep poachers from doing what they do. You know, something Joe is doing is he's taken his experience with these hounds. You know, he's been running hounds since he was a young man, just like Dan, learning from his father. You know, and now he is using that for something positive. He's training hounds to go run poachers in Africa. And I mean, is that not one of the coolest stories you've ever heard? If somebody takes his time and puts it into something positive, not just for his self gain, but this could eventually help save the rhinoceros. I mean, this is something bigger than anything else that you can think about. This is something that could go extinct and Joe's putting his time into running hounds to catch poachers. That is pretty dang awesome. Well, the rhino poaching has just gotten to be a serious, serious problem over there. And um, the one thing about the poachers is they're very good at slipping away. And with what little bit they've already tried it with hounds that aren't a tenth as good as the one Joe's trained, they're catching anywhere from 13 to 17 out of 25 poachers they put the dogs on. With that being said, these dogs that Joe's trained should catch all 25. What year did Dan's father establish the Mellon Creek Ranch rule that no one could shoot a bobcat? A, 2000, B, 1989, C, 1960, D, 2005. This segment is brought to you by Wise Eye Feeders. Feed the guest, zap the pest, shut out the rest. What year did Dan's father establish the Mellon Creek Ranch rule that no one could shoot a bobcat? In the year 1960, Mr. Brayman set the ranch rule that no one could hunt bobcats so that he could train his hounds.
Once we are gone from this world, all we have left is memories. Memories to guide those that come after us, theories that we have left behind, and the legacy in which we have given. Well, Dustin has always wanted to take his son bobcat hunting. The little boy loves to hunt more than he likes to do anything else. Throw some of mine in there, throw some of Joe's in there, and we head out and go hunting. You know, in a bobcat on this ranch, it, there's a rule out here. We don't shoot bobcats. You know, while we're, if we're varmint calling, if we're just driving around and we see one, we don't shoot bobcats. We shoot coyotes all the time, but bobcat is a no, no kill thing. Well, Dad set up the rules so that nobody could shoot bobcats with any other method other than with hounds. So when we found out that Miles wanted to shoot a bobcat, you know, we've always kept that same rule in place so that there's plenty of bobcats for us to hunt. So we just told Dustin, hey man, let's just take him with the hounds. That way we get to run our hounds and do good by our young dogs and Miles still gets to get a bobcat. So it worked out really well. I personally have never killed a bobcat. I've been with Dan, I've hunted him with his dogs many times. Miles has seen many bobcats and you know we don't shoot them. When we get a bobcat treat, he's gonna be pretty lucky to get to go shoot it. Well, to make a really long story short, you know, everybody hunts differently. The way we do it down here is we road hunt the dogs. They get out on the ground, go down the road in front of us. If we turn, we'll blow the horn, whistle. They'll come and go the direction we want to go until they find a trail where a bobcat's been, and then they start pecking away at it from there. You know, if it's a cold trail, the way our dogs work, we've got two or three dogs that stay right on that trail, opening on it, trying to grind it out. And when they find it, if they find it, and they normally do, they'll start opening on it. Now this group of dogs is trailing it'll hush and go to them. And then you get that cat that jumped and caught, you know, in a much, much shorter time frame than you would if you were doing it step for step. She's trail. You know, Miles, he got to shoot his first bobcat, and you know, I guess it meant so much more to him because we've drove around for the last few years, and we'd see him, and he couldn't shoot him from the truck, he couldn't shoot him from a deer blind. You know, it's a no, no, you can't shoot bobcats out here. So I think that's what made it more special to him is that he finally got him a bobcat, and you know, to get Dan and Joe to run it with their dogs, and, and to watch them work, and to get it in the tree, and the tree's so good, and, you know, we got up in there and Miles, he was excited and you know, here he's got his first bobcat and that's a memory he'll never forget. I would like to say that I see the future of hound hunting perfectly fine and thriving, but if we don't stop this inner bickering and ego contests that we all have in this industry, the other side's gonna win. I will run cat dogs until I can run cat dogs no more. I think Joe may have summed it up pretty perfectly when he said, you will find me dead somewhere out there under a tree. For the future of hound hunting, I hope it stays strong and I hope that more people become involved in it because no matter no matter what in the hunting industry in general not just the hound industry you will spend a long long time traveling the world over which i've done extensively in a hundreds of hunting camps before you ever meet one guy that you say you know that guy is just a jerk mm -hmm. but if you go to the bank if you go to school if you go to anywhere else you're probably going to meet one today. I've seen six or seven today already. Yep. So hunting, hunters need to get together and quit bickering amongst each other and become one force uh, against those that are trying to stop what we do because they're very well organized and very well funded. And you know, smart. What I told this one guy, 
one time and I'll end on this little rant right here. I told this one guy, you know if you're sitting outside the picnic table and one bee gets buzzing around you, you slap at it, but you really don't pay any attention. You let that swarm show up. Mm -hmm. Everybody's gone. Well, the hunters in today's society need to quit being that one bee and bickering amongst each other and create that swarm. Mm -hmm. I'm with Everybody you. Everybody then will shut up. I'm with you. Closed captioning by Vault Aviation, a different kind of whitetail. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't either. The biggest thing I remember about Joe Line was cat hunting and going down the road and his teeth sitting on the dash. <laughs>